earth or back to the, to the, to the new heavens. Because we, that is our, that is our uh, reward. That is our place. That is our, our recompense. And the prize of all prizes is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the prize. We read a while ago, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. The prize is knowing the Lord Jesus Christ from, the, from the, His feet all the way up to the top of His head. And Paul said that, that, that we grow up we grow up, Praise that we grow up in, in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Praise Christ. God. That we know Him, not just like the people in the new heaven, not just like the people in the new earth. He wants a person that will fall in love with Him, madly in love with Him, and willing to be madly surrendered to Him, to, to do anything that He wills, anything that He wants. Like a, like a, like a girl when she first falls in love with, a, with, her, with her friend, with her boyfriend, with her with her novio, with uh, uh, the, the one that's going to be her future husband. And she's willing to do anything, anything at that point <laughs> for him. Jesus Christ is looking for people in his church that are going to be willing to do for him all that he wants to do. And we're going to see tonight some of the things that he wants us to do. And to please him, not to please man. Not to please man. And the people that are going to be in the bride are going to be out of all generations. From the time of the Garden of Eden all the way to the time of, of the end of time. There are going to be people that have grown up and known our God and our, His Son to such an extent that they surrendered themselves 100%. Our church has the, the only advantage of our church is that we have keys to overcome in these last days. And we can understand heights and depths of the Word. We're not the only ones that are going to be in the bride. And a, a lot of the people in our churches are not going to make the bride because it is a personal, daily choice hey, of how much we're going to surrender to Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come here. I can use you because you're a woman. When we first know the Lord Jesus Christ, maybe all of you can't see it, we're joined to Him foot to foot. Okay? We get the blood. Amen. 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 And we get to know him a little bit. Amen. But just because you get a blood transfusion doesn't mean that you know the person that gave you that blood. All right. All right. You're not joined to that person in an intimate relationship. You know, you could know their name. You know the color of their eyes because they stuck their head in the room and said, how are you doing? But that's about it. So you're joined that way. But as you grow up, you start getting more and more and more joined until there's a joining all the way up the stature. Hey! Until there's one mind, there's one heart, there's one bowels of mercy, there's one walk, there's one eyesight, there's one doing. Hallelujah. 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 And this is what God wants. And the people that are just joined down in the feet, they're going to one place. The people that are joined up a little higher, that know Jesus Christ a little bit more, they're going to another place. And the ones that are joined completely with the stature of Jesus Christ, they've grown up to the same level in one sense. They'll never be, they'll never be Jesus. They'll no, never reach. No. I mean, He's the Son of God. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But as far as He's given man to grow up, we grow up to that stature, then He will marry her. There is going to be a wedding of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, Ahashiah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And everybody in the wedding party, everybody in the wedding party is going to have the privilege of going into that wedding feast. But not everybody in the wedding party is going to walk down the aisle. Amen. Not everybody is going to walk down the aisle. Jesus, hey. When when you had your wedding, did everybody walk down the aisle? When you had your wedding, did everybody come down the aisle to marry your husband? Uh. -uh. <laughs> Just one. Just one. Just one. And the Bible says, "My my beloved is one. My beloved is one. My beloved is one. The one out of the multitudes that was willing." To, to surrender her whole being, little by little, little by little. Here a line, there a line. Here a layer, there a layer. Here, 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 a, here, a, here a stream of rebellion, there a stream of anger. Here a little, there a little. Until her whole being was surrendered. And she could be made in the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ. A, a metamorphosis. 
uh, uh, coming out of the cocoon of sin, coming out of the cocoons of, of, of wickedness, coming out of the twisting that, that sin and, and corruption had formed within us and upon us. And we come out then with the wings of the Holy Ghost and with the, with the beauty and the light and the colors and the, and the life and the joy and the brilliance of that Son of God that lives within our soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. And the new city, it says, is a city of jasper. And it says, and the, there, is no, there is no sun, there is no light in the new city because God and the Lamb are the light of that city. And, and the angel called and he said, John, come, I want to show you the bride of the Lamb. I want to show you the bride of the Lamb. And so what was God telling us with that? That we are to be crystal clear vessels of the light of God, of the nature of the Lamb of God, of the nature and the love and the brilliance of Jesus Christ so that He can shine out through us throughout all of eternity. What a high calling. 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 High calling. Hallelujah. 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 And I, I always go back to it because in, in Spanish, it's soberana vocacion. It's the sovereign vocation. The sovereign vocation. The highest vocation that you can attain to. It's not being a, are you in the Air Force? Not being a, a general in the Air Force or a, a jet pilot that can, you know, shoot down so many enemy planes and get all of those medals on your on your shoulder and on your on your on your whatever your lapel and, and march down the, the down the street or not have not have uh, two dozen kids and they all be. <laughs> That's not the high calling. A high calling is not to be a medical doctor. A high calling calling is not to be a, a therapist. A high calling is not to be. Uh, 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 a sign language person that can, can yeah. that's not the high calling the high calling is to be the bride of the king of kings Praise and the lord of lords hallelujah 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 and God has laid out in many many ways to show us that not all Christians are going to be the same in eternity because not all Christians want the same in this life not all Christians are going to be the same in eternity because not all Christians want the same in this life. All, some of them just want fire insurance. They just want to get out of hell. That's all they want. That's all they want. They just want fire insurance. And they're happy with that. Those aren't going to be the ones that know Jesus Christ up to the fullness of His stature. They don't, they don't want to know the fullness of His joy, the fullness of His peace, the, the sweetness of His voice, the, the, the love that they can feel in the prayer closet when He comes down to say, you're mine. And she can say, I am yours. And, and, and that, that, that joy, that place that can only the bride know. They, they, they don't want that. There's other people that want just a little bit, a little bit more. And they, and they grow up a little bit more. They're going to have another place along this road here. But there's going to be one there's going to be one group. And that's not, it's not a church. It's not a denomination. It's people, individuals, that are willing to sell out in love, a love relationship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's the high calling, the, the highest calling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And our Lord and our God has called us to be a holy people, a holy people, a special treasure, a place where He can put His treasure... A special treasure house, a, a warehouse. And he's not going to put his treasures in something dirty. He's going to put his treasures in, in the vessels that are, are wanting to be that crystal clear jasper that his, his treasures can shine out of. And he gets the glory and he gets the honor throughout all of eternity. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You all know that there is going to be a wedding of the bride, right? Amen? And it's coming up very soon. Very, very, very soon. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's go to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus. <clears throat> God had a people. And it was the Israelites. And they were down in a land called Egypt. Amen. Amen. They were in a place 
of slavery. The people in the world think they're free. They think they're so free that they can kill themselves with tobacco, that they can kill themselves with drugs, that they can kill themselves and others with alcohol. They think they are so free that they can kill themselves with AIDS, that they can kill themselves with all the venereal diseases. They are so free to do what they want to do. And really they are slaves to the passions and the, and the, and the, 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 the what do you call it, the, the, the control of Pharaoh out there in that world. And yet they think they are free. But there's, there's a time in our life when God puts the pressure and we start screaming to set us free. God, come. I don't want to be like this anymore. God, help me. I'm desperate. And He comes down with all of His power and His glory and His strength. And He breaks the chains of sin that have bound us all of our life. And He sets us out on a journey. Here in, in, in Exodus chapter, chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, and it says, And the Lord God said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. And I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Where did God want to take them? He wanted to take them to Canaan's land. Amen? Over here to bridal land. Because in Isaiah he said, Your land shall no, be, no, more, be long, no more be called desolate, but it shall be called Beulah. Beulah land. Beulah! We sing, Oh, Beulah land. Sweet Beulah land. And if you look in the margin of your Bibles, you'll find out that Beulah means married. Bar- married land. And he said, and I will take you as a wife, as a young man takes a wife. He said, Israel is going to be my bride. Israel is going to be my wife here on earth. And so when she entered into Canaan, she entered as a, as a bride. Yet she had to mature. She had many things to overcome yet in Canaan's land. She didn't just all of a sudden become perfect. She had a lot of things to overcome. And unfortunately, Israel in the natural failed at that time. But God still has a covenant over Israel and someday He's going to bring Israel back. They're going to be the remnant out of the tribulation that God is going to, going to save and keep from the Antichrist and He's going to bring them then in the millennium time to, to know Him. They're going to grow up in knowledge of Him and they're going to be the center of the new earth with the, with the ones that are kings and priests out of this generation. Amen? I'm jumping a lot of things and you can ask the people to explain a lot of these things to you, okay? But he said, I've come down, I have come down to take you out of Egypt. God does not want us to stay here in Egypt. He wants to make a butterfly out of us. He doesn't want us to stay down here where the worms crawl around in the muck and the mire and the sin and the filthiness and the dirty, dirty world that, that, that Pharaoh, the devil, is a, is a master of. He wants us to come out into a bridal land and into a bridal relationship. And to do that, they had to cross through the wilderness. Using, using what God is using tonight, we could say this is the cocoon stage right here. God sends, sent Israel into the wilderness to show her all of the cocoons down in her midnight will <laughs> that He wanted to get rid of so that she could go into bridal land with herself being cleaned out on the inside. Out here in Egypt, God starts cleaning us up on the outside. Okay? He starts taking away the things of the world that do us harm. The the drugs, the drinking, the cigarettes, the the running around, the places we used to frequent, the, the things that we used to do. He starts taking that away, the outside. When we get into the wilderness, the place of testing and trials, in this place over here, he, take, he starts working then on our mind, on our thoughts, on our feelings, on our affections. He starts cleaning us out inside of the, of the resentments and the angers and, the, and the, these things that gnaw and chew away on the inside. That's what he wants us to get rid of. And then when we get into Canaan's land, he goes down into the subconscious part of our being. So from the exterior part of our being down into the subconscious, God is going to clean up a people to be His bride. And each stage of the journey, the ones that are in, that are in Egypt, 
The ones that stay in Egypt are going to go to the new heavens. The ones that wander around for 40 years in the wilderness don't want any more than, of Jesus than that. They're going to be on the new earth if they overcome, even at that stage, so that they can be kings and priests, overcomers. Uh, but there's going to be some that, like Joshua, like Caleb, like Phineas, that were jealous for the holiness of God. And they were, Phineas was willing to take a spear and put it through the heart of the fornicators and idolaters that were causing a curse to come down on God. We get that holy hatred inside of us and we put the spear of the holy righteous God to the things in our life that are separating us from Him. We will walk into Canaan's land. We will be overcomers in Canaan's land. And we will overcome in Canaan's land. And we've got to get that zeal of Joshua. Hopefully tomorrow we'll talk about Joshua and Caleb and some of these. Tomorrow. And... and, and and they, they, they were tremendous because they had something special. It said Caleb and Joshua had another spirit in them. They had something different than the murmurers and complainers and backbiters and, and rebellers out here in the wilderness. There was something in them because they had a vision. They, had, they knew there was something up ahead. They had a love for the promise of God that He would have a people and He would have a special, a special place prepared for them. So God is going to have a bride but we've got to make our choices now. Yeah. And our choices now are not easy choices because of the, the mass of confusing yeah. darkness and clouds that are coming against us in these last days that we talked about last night. But God can give us a backbone. Yeah. God can give us that staunch uh, Joshua spirit. He can help us be overcomers even in these last days. And God will have a bride out of this generation. And if it's you and if it's me, praise His holy name. But if, but if you don't want to go, He's going to find some pla somebody to fill your place because He's got a certain number assigned for His Son. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And He's going to have people out of every, every walk of life, out of every people that have overcome or been every, everything possible. He's going to have homosexuals, converted homosexuals up there. He's going to have converted drug addicts up there. He's going to have converted murderers up there. Do you know that, uh, that Dahmer... Jeffrey Dahmer got saved the other day and got baptized? He's not gonna, he might not make the bride, but he got saved. He's going to be in the new heavens. God can do anything. But in the bride, there might be a Jeffrey Dahmer that we don't know about. Somebody that was even more wicked than him. Because if it weren't that way, then somebody could come up before the throne and say, well, I couldn't overcome. I couldn't be in the bride because I had just too much sin to overcome. And then God's going to say, come here, Jeffrey. Tell him how you overcame down on earth and you made it to the bride. And you made it to the bride. Yeah. There, might, there, there, there could be uh, somebody that just wicked, wicked, wicked in witchcraft and Satanism. The, the worst, most filthy thinking, horrible, wicked, powerful Satanist that ever existed. Uh, I'm Tom LeVay, if he would ever get saved. Or if he doesn't get saved, he can come up before that throne and God can point him back to somebody out of Babylon or somebody out of, out of the time of the, of the prophets that was even more wicked than he is and could show them, this person not only accepted me, this person not only was cleaned up, this person made my bride. You could have done the very same thing. All right, all right. Hallelujah. So the bride is going to be a witness to the saving power, to the cleansing power, to the redeeming power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that His mercy and His grace can extend to the very depths of sin and make that person a butterfly to, 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 to show forth His beauty and His glory all through eternity. All through eternity. Hallelujah. There will be a bride. So God took them out of, Israel, out of Egypt he took them through the wilderness and into Canaan's land. And along the way, he gave them some lessons. But before we go to that, I want to go one other place. Let's go to Ezekiel. Who is the king of this earth? Yep. Lucifer. And, and before I forget it one more time, brother, listening to those tapes, and I'll put it on this tape too, son of the morning refers to Lucifer. He's a star, mm -hmm. star of the morning. It refers to... to they, they've switched even that in some of the new Bible versions. Mm -hmm. So find another song to sing for a while. 
They've switched it around so it will refer to either one of them. Amen? Who wrote the song? Is he going on for God? As far as you know. <laughs> on TVN. He had a serious testimony. Yeah. Yeah, something had happened to him. He, had, he just went away from mm -hmm. Anyway. But they're... they're who, who is the owner of this work, earth? Not the owner. I'm sorry. There's one owner. God. <laughs> who is, who's the ruler? Who's the governor of this, of this earth? Lucifer. He rules and reigns in Egypt. And he's going to rule and reign in a tremendous way throughout the tribulation period. God's going to let him have his fling. But in Ezekiel 28, we were talking a little bit about this last night. Verse 12, it says, Son of man, Ezekiel 28, verse 12, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. And you, by reading the rest of this, you know it's not a literal king. Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Wisdom and beauty. He was a beautiful, beautiful angel. Thou wast, thou hast been in Eden in the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle and gold. All of these were in his, in his, in his uh, covering. And all of these things have to do with different aspects of his nature. God made him a beautiful angel in the very beginning. And then it said, the workmanship of thy, what? Tabrets. And of thy pipes. Was what? Who prepared it in Lucifer? Jehovah. Who created Lucifer? Jehovah. Who created Lucifer? Jehovah. The Lord, God. There's nothing created that he didn't he didn't make. Okay? So he created him. And what did how did he create him? Perfect in wisdom, perfect in beauty, and with what inside? Tabrets and and pipes. Tabrets and pipes. What are tabrets? Rhythm. Rhythm. It was telling a while ago or sometime that you just go, you go in some place where there's a beat. You don't have to teach your kids, you don't have to teach your kids to get a beat. They're born with a beat. Because God put the beat in there for him. The same way that he put a beat in Lucifer to lead the angelic host in praise. He's put a beat in us as his creatures also to praise him with every bit of our being. Amen? He's given us that for him, for his glory and for his honor. And Lucifer had the pipes. The pipes speak of the wind instruments, the organ, the, the, well, the piano is uh, like, a, like a guitar, uh, but the, the pipes, the, the trumpet, the flute, he had music within him. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a saying in Spanish, he's full of music. But it doesn't, sometimes that means that he's not so hot. <laughs> but the, he, he had music on the very, in the very depths of his being because God made him to be a leader of the angelic choir and to teach the angels to dance, to shout, to, to, to praise God, to, to do everything that they could do. And he had the beat. He had the beat. He had the beat. And he had the, and he had the soft music and the, and the, and the, and the soft sounding music. The, the, the heart realm music that we, that we speak about. Not only the feet and the heart, but he also had head realm music. The beautiful uplifting songs to, to lift the people, to lift them, the angels to soar in praises. And, and what happened to him? He said, and thou art the anointed cherub. And anointed means fully anointed. It means rubbed in with oil. He was, he was soaked in the Holy Ghost. He had the full anointing of the Holy Ghost upon him. This is before his fall. So he had, he had the, the, the wisdom of, of how to pray and how to praise and what God liked and what God wanted. And he had all of this within him. And I have set thee so 
and thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, and thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. And by the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. So the very first one that had this music, this rhythm within him, was Lucifer, way back in eternity past. And like we saw last night, when Lucifer fell, he took that wisdom to deceive us into following the lies that he's putting, again, uh, putting out in the world today. But he also brought down with him this music, this powerful, anointed music. And who is he using the music for? Himself? Himself? But who had the music first? God. Lucifer is a robber and a stealer. Lucifer is a liar. And God's people were taught by God from the very beginning to do it like God wants it. And the Israelites learned how to praise God like God wants it. And then as time went on, then the, the dances and the, and the drums and all of these things started becoming more popular with the pagans and with the pagan rituals and, and with, the, with the worldly things. And God's people started backing off from one of the most important things that the bride is going to do. And that important thing is to use your whole being for praise to the Lord our God. Amen? Let's go to Corinthians. Uh, let me see. Hallelujah. Let's go, before we go to Corinthians, put your finger in Corinthians, let's go to Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13, 8. Hebrews 13, 8. It says, all together, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Does Jesus change his mind about what he likes or doesn't like? No, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if we can find what he liked last time, we can understand what he likes today, and he's going to like it out in eternity. Amen? Let's go then to, to uh, Corinthians. Let me, let me see which one. Did I... mm, First Corinthians. First Corinthians 6. First Corinthians 6, verse 19. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That it means that today, now, this Bible verse also applies to us. Okay? And it says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Wow. Therefore, since you were bought by a price, since you have the blood of Jesus Christ in you, since you have been redeemed out of the chains of sin, therefore, what are you to do to God? Glorify God. Glorify God. God. If God didn't give us anything after that moment of salvation, what are we to do? Glorify God. Glorify God. How? Singing? In your body and in your spirit. And in your spirit. In spirit. Okay, what is my body? My voice? Just my voice? No. Hallelujah. Feet. Hallelujah. Yes. Ah, my feet? Your head. My head? Yes. What else? My hands? Yes. What else? Yes. Your whole your whole being. Yes. Everything. Yes. This is my body. Yes. Yes. And we're to do it just because He, He bought us by the blood of Calvary. We don't have to have any other reason to do it other than being saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 
Messiah. But way back, way back, way back, when the devil started seeing that there was an army that was being formed called the New Christian Church, he started moving in and started putting out the fire and started changing the things and started changing the doctrines and started telling them he didn't have to do it. And by the time Constantine made the Catholic Church the official church, they weren't dancing anymore. They weren't shouting anymore. They weren't lifting up the name anymore. They weren't doing what God had created them to do anymore. They had lost everything that God had put within them for them to use. Our body is to be used to glorify God. Hallelujah. There's no other reason to exist. He made us to praise Him. He made us to praise and to adore and to worship Him and to use all of our body. And all of our body means all of our body. And He said to also do it with the Spirit. You're not going to get out there with a form. You're not going to get out there with, with just, you know, I'm going to do it just because. And, and you do it just because too. We're going to see in just a minute. But you don't do it like that. You get your spirit involved in it. And then your spirit and in your soul, you're thinking on the words and you're thinking of, of what you're doing and you're thinking, you saved me, you washed me, you, co you, you covered me, you helped me. And your soul and spirit and body then start in a tremendous role to soar up to God. And you fulfill the reason for existing. Hallelujah. You fulfill the reason for existing. It said, and God rested on the Sabbath day. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 All right, then. Uh -huh. it said, God rested on the seventh day. And the way it's, it's spoken of there in Hebrew is that He breathed on His creation. And He wanted His creation to breathe back. Yeah on Him. Hallelujah. He wanted a circle of... of he, he, he gives us the life. But we're not to use our life for ourselves. Our life is to be spent for Him. And, and he, wanted, he wanted creation to breathe back on Him. I love you, Lord. He wanted Him to breathe back. Praise you, God. He wanted us to breathe back on Him. Thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And the Jews were taught by God how to do it. How to do it. That's why they're a special people. They're, special, they're a special breed on the face of the earth. And even today they praise God like, like we don't. Like, well, not in our church. <laughs> we're tr our church, we're trying to get back like they were. But, but, but most of the churches from, from that time that it was taken out, they, they've gotten in their mentality. We don't have to shout. We don't have to do all of that because God is different now. But God does not change. All that has changed is pride of man. All that's changed is carnal thinking that got in the, in the works and twisted up what God wanted. Amen? So let's go and let's see some Bible verses. Somebody write them down for Sister, for Sister Ursula so she can take them home and study them. And you all take them home and study them. And you all... Uh, let's go to... Let's go to Exodus. Just to cover a little bit more territory. Let's go to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. You want to know how to overcome in these last days? I'm going to give you the key tonight. Amen? In Exodus chapter 12, they were in the land of Egypt. A dark night of death was going to be upon the land of Egypt. And God told them, I want you to take a lamb and I want you to take the blood of that lamb and I want you to put the blood of that lamb. Huh? I was going to... Uh -huh. <laughs> God said, take the blood of the lamb and put that blood on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the door. Because tonight, death is going to pass over. And I'm going, to, I'm going to judge the idols and the gods of Egypt. And so they took the blood. And it said in verse 7, And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and up on the upper door post wherein they shall eat. And they shall eat the flesh in that night roasted with fire. And if we go down to verse 22 it says, And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood and it, and, and, that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood which is in the basin, and none of you shall go out at that door 
of the house until the morning. When is the morning coming? When Jesus comes back. We are not to get out from under the covering of the blood. We are not to get out from under the covering of the blood until morning comes. Until we are over there on the other side. Don't even stick your head out to look around to see what's going on out there in the world. Stay back in the house. Stay back in the house. Stay back in the house. Stay covered with that blood. Hallelujah. Shalom. Hallelujah. 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 But he didn't take them out with the blood. They were to get under the blood that night. They were to eat of the lamb. They were to get the staff in their hand, put the shoes on their feet because there was going to be a walking out of Egypt. God wasn't going to bring his treasures into Egypt. He said, you get up and you get out. I've gone over that many, many times. I won't go over it tonight. A wise word to the wise is sufficient. Let's go to Exodus 13. Exodus 13, they walked a ways. They moved forward a little ways. Exodus 13, verse 20. And they took their journey from Sukkoth and encamped at Etham at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in, in a pillar of cloud by day and in a pillar of fire by night. God gave them the blood and God gave them the fire because he knew they needed the fire and they needed the covering of the Holy Ghost out in the wilderness. He knew they needed the blood to keep over them, to protect them from the hordes of the enemy as they were escaping and the spiritual enemies that were going to come against them. So before they went into the battle of the wilderness, before they went into the testing place, before they went out to the place where they were going to be tried and tempted with the murmuring and complaining and rebellion and backbiting and resentment and anger, all of these things inside, he said, you've got to have the blood and you've got to have the fire. You've got to have the cloud and fire going before you, protecting you, moving ahead of you. And if you don't have the cloud and fire today, you need to get it. You need to get those Holy Ghost tongues. You need to get the fire in prayer. You need to get the fire moving inside of you or else you won't be able to make it through the darkness of the wilderness to make it into Canaan's land up ahead. Amen? Hallelujah. And when they got the cloud and fire, what did the cloud and fire do? Take them into Canaan's land? What's the next verse? Chapter 14, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Yes, yeah, what verse 1? Okay. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Uh huh. Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and escape before him and encamp before who's that? Philomar? By ha he Between. By ha he And the sea. Over against Baal, Zephon. Mm hmm. Before it shall, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. Mm -hmm. They were going one direction, and God said, "Turn around." Oh, watch out! And He took them to a place where Baal Siphon was on one side, Migdal, an enemy military camp, was on the other side. Mountains were on the on the other side of them. The sea was in front of them. And Pharaoh's army was galloping miles behind them. He took them to a place of entrapment. He took them to a place where they could not go to the right or the left or turn around and go back. They couldn't say nothing but was A place of trust. A place of complete trust in the power of God. A complete trust. Because he wanted to show them he wanted to show them the power of those waters and the power of that name to set them free from all that Egypt held and had held bondage over them. Amen. He took them to the water. He had the blood. They were saved, as we would say it today. Woo! They had the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. But they had to go through the waters. They had to go through the waters. They had to go through the waters. Because in the waters, that is where Pharaoh was drowned and where the Egyptians were destroyed and where the chain was broken off 
and they were free on the other side to follow forward in God's perfect will. They had to be baptized. They had to go down into the waters. Let's all go down to the waters. There was... Oops, in Spanish. The water. The waters. The waters. The waters. The waters. And what opened the waters? What opened the waters, literally? The rod. There was a special rod that Moses had that he lifted up over those waters. And those waters opened up under the power of that name <coughs> that was on that rod. And on that rod was the name of God. On that, na- on that rod was the name of God. It says in chapter 3, you can read it when you get home, and he took the rod of God and he walked forward. Amen? On this was the name of God. Only God's rod, only the rod with God's name written on it is going to open the waters so you can go free. Amen, amen, amen. There's no other rod. And a rod speaks of authority. The rod speaks of, 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 the, of the ruling staff. And God had only one rod. God has only one authority. Only one authority. And who is that one authority? Jesus. Jesus. There is only one name under heaven, on earth, whereby man must be saved. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. And sometime I'd like to, I think we did part of it in, in Fort Ord once, but this is a tremendous chapter. The Father was up in heaven. The Father was up there waiting for the time that Israel would go forth. He was blowing down through those waters. And those waters froze up on one side and on the other side. And the Father's hot breath went down through there while Moses walked forth with the rod of God, typifying, Sir, holding it up over those waters. Sir, hallelujah. Typifying the power of Jesus Christ to part the waters of death so that his people can go through to a new freedom that they could never have had in Egypt. Never have had. Hallelujah. But you've got to use the right rod or the waters won't open. If Moses would have stood there and said, Well, open up waters. In the name of the Lord, open up waters. Nothing would have happened. Because God was demonstrating the power of His Son that someday would literally come down and would die like back in Ramses with the blood and would be consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost on Calvary and then would descend down into death and hell and open up death and hell and ascend to go back to his Father up there in heaven at the right hand of God the Father. But when they went through those waters, he was demonstrating that those waters have a reason for being. And if you'll see in the tabernacle, there was a place that they were to wash. They were to be bathed. They had to wash their hands and feet every time they ministered. The waters are very important. What were the only waters that they had out in the wilderness? The waters of the of the rock? They were in the desert. There's no streams or rivers in the desert. What was the water that they had to put in the labor? <clears throat> huh? The rock. And what opened what opened the waters of the rock? The rod. The rod that they had taken through the waters of the Red Sea. When it was time, it they came out and God put that rod down on. Moses put that rod down on the rock and waters started flowing forth. You want your Bible to come alive? You want the Word of God to, to sprout and to grow and to, and to be fruitful? Then you go down into the waters and you pick up a rod so that every time you go to the Word of God, you can say, waters, I'm thirsty. Hey, Christ, give me the food. Christ, give me the substance. Christ, open up because I'm thirsty and I'm hungry for you. But you've got to get that rod. Moses didn't stand up there and say, okay, come on, we're thirsty. Want something to eat, want something to drink. Uh Uh-uh. He did it like God said it. He did it like God said it. He did it like God said it the first time. The second time he didn't. The first time he did. And the waters came out of the rock. But he used a rod that had power on it. Amen? Amen. And his father honors that rod. There's a lot about that. Wish we had more than...